Ranger. Fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver! Away! With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. report just came in on the state. Oh. Listen to this. The samples of ore you sent show a gold content of nearly $5,000 per ton. Well. Think of it. Owning one of the richest gold claims in the area. Well, I'm sure everybody's going to be mighty pleased with your good fortune. You mean our good fortune? You don't think I'd forget you, do you? Why, if you hadn't carried me on credit, I'd have given up prospecting a long time ago. Oh, I was only too glad to have the chance to help. Say, Jim, that letter you received certainly must have contained good news. I heard your reaction to it across the street in my office. <laughs> it was good news, Mr. Carter. Read this. Five thousand. Say, that is wonderful. Congratulations. Thanks. Mr. Carter. Yes, Jim? You're a lawyer. Would you draw up a partnership agreement making Mr. Gilman a half-owner in my gold claim? Oh, no, Jim, you don't have to... Look, you grub-staked me when I needed it. I can't forget that. Yeah, but half your claim just for advancing your little credit. It's only fair. Besides, that's the way I like it. You certainly have been more than generous, Jim. I'll start to work on the papers right away. Say, after I've drawn up the partnership agreement, Roger and I could drive out to your cabin tonight and we'd get it all signed. Oh, I won't be there. I'm going over to the Fosters. I want to tell Ruth... I mean, Miss Foster, about the good news. Would it be possible for you to drop off the uh, papers there? Well, I imagine so. It's all right with Roger. And we'll see you tonight at the Fosters. I'm sorry to make you come so far out of your way. Oh, uh, don't mention it, Jim. And again, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I shouldn't let you do this, Jim, but... Well, I guess I'm just not a strong enough person to say no. I wouldn't do it if I didn't want to. See you tonight. Bye, Jim. And thanks. This should be a good place to make camp. Uh -huh, there are plenty of fresh grass for Silver and Scout. There's a small town a little north of here. While I set up camp, suppose you ride there and get what supplies we need. Let uh, me ride fast. Come again. Finished drawing up the partnership agreement. Huh? Well, <laughs> didn't take you much time. Hey, if Jim had stayed around town a little longer, we could have signed the whole thing right here. Yes, but uh, I have put in a clause of the agreement that I'd like you to see before we see Jim again. Oh? Huh? Briefly, and in legal terminology, it states that if you or Jim should die, the other receives the entire claim. Well, do you think Jim will agree to signing anything like that? Oh, I think he might, with your help. Think of it, Roger. If anything should happen to Jim, you'd get the whole thing. If you think I'd be a party to anything happening to Jim... I didn't say anything is going to happen to Jim. But if it did, it'd be nice to own the entire claim. No, no, I'm not going to talk Jim into signing anything. You'll do exactly as I say. And you'll persuade Jim to leave this clause in the agreement. And if I don't? I'll see you hanged for murder. I imagine the authorities in Santa Fe would like to know where you are. They're still looking for you for that old murder charge. I knew you were the one they were after before you'd been in town three weeks. You kept quiet all this time? Why not? 
The reward for turning you in wasn't big enough to tempt me. But now you can pay well for my silence. What happens to me now? Nothing. As long as you do what I say. After all, as your silent partner in a rich gold claim, I'd be foolish to turn you in. Now that we understand each other, we'd better get going. We have a long ride ahead of us. My buggy's outside. Santa Fe. It was really an accident. The mistake I made was in being afraid. Afraid that people wouldn't believe me, so I ran away. And now, because I'm still a coward, I'm doing something I know is wrong. It's better to be practical than to hang. to the Foster's place just over the next ridge. Hey, it's a fine-looking gun the Indians carry. You know, this Indian might even be a killer. A killer with a grudge against Jim Blake. What are you talking about? Well, think how convenient it'd be if after the partnership agreement was signed, this Indian should kill Blake. Well, you might even make a heroic effort to save Blake's life and kill the Indian, but just too late. So. With Jim dead, you could blackmail me into giving every cent that came out of the claim, huh? Oh, not every cent, perhaps, but a rather substantial percentage. Now, you're not going to do this to Jim, nor to the Indian. Well, then I guess I'll just have to turn you over to the sheriff on that old murder charge. You'll do exactly as I say if you don't want to hang, you understand? Now, help me move this Indian over to those bushes. What are you going to do with him? We'll tie and gag him. Then we're gonna frame this Indian for murder. Uh, you know, Miss Foster, the uh, story around town is that Jim here is soon gonna be a very rich man. Well, of course, Sheriff. That's why I'm marrying him. <laughs> As you can see, I have a very practical daughter. I'll get it, Ruth. Evening, Jim. Sorry we're a little late. That's all right. Come on in. Miss Foster, Miss Foster. Sheriff. Sure. Good evening. Excuse my not getting up, but my rheumatism's troubling me a little bit again. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Well, just having a little celebration. Cake and coffee. Won't you join us? Well, thank you. I uh, didn't expect to see you here, Sheriff. I was just leaving. I stopped by on my way to the Moore Ranch to offer my congratulations here to Jim. Must you go, Sheriff? I'm sorry, ma'am, but I must be going. Well, thanks again, Sheriff, for driving by and giving your congratulations. <laughs> you two deserve the best in the world. Good night. Good night, Mr. Foster. Mr. Gilman. Good night, Sheriff. 
Oh, Jim, I have the partnership agreements all made out for you and Roger to sign. Would you care to look at them? Oh, thank you. Scout. Where's Tato? Easy, boy. Easy. The looks of that bruise, you've taken quite a fall. Has something happened to Tato? All right, Scout. We'll get Silver and find Tato. Come on, boy. Everything seems fine, Mr. Carter. Except this part that says that if either Mr. Gilman or I die, the other gets the entire claim. Well, a clause like that's usually included in all partnership agreements. And since you didn't specify otherwise, I put it in. But I was thinking of Ruth. Uh, she and I were planning on getting married in the near future. Yes, I had heard such a rumor. And since I don't have any family, if anything should happen to me, I'd like for Ruth to have my share of the claim. I can certainly understand that, Jim. Well, we could change the agreement, Jim. Yes, we could. I have only one thing to say. I'd certainly hate to have to strike that clause out. Try to look at it this way, Jim. If anything should happen to you or Roger, with this paragraph in, business could go along as usual without interruption until the new owners or partners could agree on how to manage the property. Well, I can understand that, but I was thinking of Ruth. Well, of course you were. Oh, there's a very simple solution. Tomorrow morning, I'll draw up a second agreement called a writer, stating that if anything happens to you, Jim, half the profits from the claim will go to Ruth. Now, how's that sound? That sounds fine, Mr. Carter. Well, Roger, looks as if you've made a trip out here for nothing, and we'll have to come again tomorrow. I'm sorry. I feel guilty about causing you so much trouble. Ah, forget it, Jim. Say, I have an idea. You and Roger could sign the agreement papers now. Then after I draw up the other papers, I'll have Roger sign them, and I'll bring them out here for your signature. Then Roger wouldn't have to leave his store and make a second trip. Well, uh, I... I can get them here by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. You couldn't ask for any faster service than that. I guess not. And I'll leave the signed agreement papers here with you and pick up Roger's copy when I come out with the writer's agreement tomorrow. That'll close the whole deal. How does that sound, Jim? Well, all right, Mr. Carter. Where do I sign? Right here on this line. Roger will put his signature underneath. Miss Foster and Mr. Foster will act as witnesses and make the whole thing legal. Make a play for your guns. Now, get down off that horse. Slow like. Is that a badge of a sheriff or a deputy? I'm Sheriff Dawson. Now drop those guns. I've done nothing wrong. I'm putting you under arrest. Do you usually arrest people without cause? That mask is cause enough. Where'd you get that horse? I'm looking for a friend of mine. I believe his horse stumbled. My friend was hurt by the fall. Uh, we'll talk more about that later, after I've seen your face. This mask will stay on. We'll see about that. Sorry I had to do that, Sheriff, but I don't have time to argue with you. Right now, you're coming with me. I'll return your gun when we part company. Now, turn around. Looks like I don't have much choice. Just keep your hands high until I get mounted. Thanks again for the refreshments, Miss Foster, and I do hope your father's up and about again soon. Thank you. I'm sorry to have caused you so much trouble. Oh, I got it, Jim. It's all in the day's work. Now, good night, Miss Foster. Good, good night. night. Good night, Jim. Good night. Good night. Indian go? Of course not. We're going to take him back to the foster place. Give me a hand getting him in the buggy. This is as close as we'll go to the foster place. The Indian's conscious now. We can go the rest of the way on foot. I'll loosen the ropes around his legs enough so he can walk. The sheriff is sure to suspect us. 
Especially with a partnership agreement saying I'm to get everything. Uh, what can he accuse us of? When Foster and his daughter say it was the Indian who killed Jim, uh, they'll be our star witnesses. Are you going to get him to say that? Very simple. I'll go back to the Foster's place. Now, when I'm inside, you bring the Indian around to one of the windows. I'll cough once. That'll be a signal for you to get ready. Then when I cough again, you shoot Jim. I'll point toward the window. And they'll see the Indian just before you pull him aside and shoot him yourself. It's very easy. But they'll see the gag in his mouth. You've got a handkerchief. Put it over the lower half of his face. Why should I be the one to do the shooting? Because they can only hang you once. Now, after you've shot Jim and the Indian, cut the ropes off the Indian and put them in your pocket. And don't forget to take the gag out of his mouth. Now, here's the Indian's gun. Use it to shoot Jim and then kill the Indian with your own. In the confusion, I'll grab one of the signed partnership papers so you'll have a copy. What about the Fosters? Won't they say something about the partnership agreement being missing? And won't they say something to the sheriff about the other agreement you were going to draw up with Jim, giving half the claim to Ruth? We'll deny anything they say. It'll be their word against the signed paper. Remember, when I cough once, you get ready. Then on the second cough, you shoot Blake. Now, you and the Indian better get started. My friend fell from his horse here. Well, I don't see him. There are also tracks of a wagon or carriage. And two other men. The men drag my friend over toward that clump of brush. There's something curious about these tracks. The wagon stopped here, and then they moved my friend over to this point. So? Well, from the footprints, they left my friend here and drove back in the wagon. Well, then your friend should still be around. Well, that's a strange part of it. The wagon came back. You can see where the original tracks have been crossed over. Yeah. And when the men came back here, they helped my friend in the wagon, turned it around and drove back in the same direction from which they came. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Why didn't the men take your friend with them in the first place? That's what I'd like to know. Tell me, Sheriff, Earlier this evening, did you see anyone driving a light wagon or a carriage? No. Hey, wait a minute. John Carter drove his buggy to the Fosters tonight, so he'd come along this road. Who is this John Carter? Well, he's a lawyer with about as much ethics as a skunk. If there's a shady deal on, he's mixed up in it. In that case, we'd better try and follow those tracks. Uh, mister, would you give me back my six gun? Won't that put us back where we started? Well, when we started, I was against you. And now I'm with you. Oh? And if Carter's pulling something, I'd, uh, I'd like to have my gun handy. All right, Sheriff. Thanks. Oh, come on. We got a lot of fast tracking to do. You so turn in. You can't seem to stay up as late as you young folks anymore. Good night, Dad. Good night. Good night, Mr. Foster. Good night. I wonder who that could be. Oh, Jim, I'm glad you're still here. May I come in? Of course. Where's Mr. Gilman? He's outside, standing guard. Standing guard? Is something wrong, Mr. Carter? Yes, I'm afraid so. Jim, have you ever made an enemy of a redskin? An Indian? Not that I know of. Well, think hard. There must be some reason for an Indian to have a grudge against you. Well, I've never had anything to do with an Indian. What seems to be the trouble? Well, on our way back to town, Roger and I were held up by an Indian. Before he'd let us go, he demanded to know where you lived. Me? Yes, he even asked for you by name, Jim Blake. Well, what did you tell him? Well, we told him we didn't even know Jim. But the Indian seemed to know he lived near here, so we thought we'd come back and warn you. He might even have followed us here. you were talking about? Sure is. They must have taken your friend inside. Sheriff, there's a man standing over there near the window. There's two of them. One of them is my friend Tonto. I wonder what they're doing there. Let's leave the horses here and find out. It must all be some mistake. Oh, perhaps there's another Jim Blake. 
Yes, that's possible. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I'd uh, better be getting back to town if I'm going to report that holdup to the sheriff. Jim. I thought I heard something outside. Yeah, it's probably just my horse. <coughs> Are you all right, Mr. Carter? Yes, of course. An Indian? You're not touch gun. You're making a big mistake, Indian. Oh, please, let us explain it. Me not hurt you. Me come for him. Oh, don't shoot. Listen to me. Gillen, where are you? Him not able to help you. No, look, shoot him. That's Jim Blake. Shoot him. I'll make it right with you. I'll pay you. I'll pay you well. Mr. Carter, what are you saying? You not talk. You want him dead. How much you pay? I'll give you a share of his gold claim. How can you give any of the claim? You don't own any of it. Wait a minute. That's why you wanted that clause left in the agreement. Listen to me. Shoot him, Indian. Shoot him. You won't shoot anyone. A masked man. Don't let this mask fight you, miss. I'm not an outlaw. Good work, Tonto. You played it just right. All right, Carter, you're under arrest. I got proof enough to put you behind bars for a long time. All right, Sheriff, I'll... Yep, yep, yep! Drop your guns, all of you, or I'll blow a hole through Jim. We better do as he says. Now, oh, it's gonna be so easy to kill all of you. You can't mean that, Carter. Look, you don't know what it's like to know you've killed a man. You can never erase the memory. My conscience won't bother me. I'm not weak like you are. I won't let you do it. Oh, you're going to stop me. Yes. I'm going to stop you. Don't come any closer. I'm going to stop you. <laughs> Brave thing, Mr. Gilman. Brave? I'm not brave. I'm really a coward. If I weren't, none of this would have had to happen. Jim. Jim, according to the clause in the agreement, the whole claim will be yours now. That's not important now. I'll get a doctor. No, Jim. No. Everything is working out just fine. As it is. We have another cup of coffee? No, thank you, Miss Foster. Tano and I must be riding on. I don't know how Ruth or I can ever possibly repay you or Tonto. I want to again add my thanks to you both. Well, sir, we have found ample repayment in finding new friends. Adios. Goodbye. <laughs> That masked man and his Indian friend are a real credit to the West. They certainly are. I'd like to know more about them. I've heard about a man who wears a mask, rides a white stallion, and travels with an Indian named Tonto, but I never really expected to meet him. He's the Lone Ranger. I don't feel horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver, away! With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. Stagecoach was the principal means of transporting men and valuables across the lonely reaches of the frontier. 
and as such it was a natural target for the outlaws who preyed upon the early West. One of the most vicious of these outlaws was a desperado named Glenn Bolton. There she goes. Come on. Someone need help. We'd better see. Bolton's men. Yes, I recognize the man. It was Glenn Bolton who got away. Well, he's wounded and can't get far. You tie this man up and take him into town. I'll pick up Bolton's trail. Hey, come back later. Pick up your trail from here. Tony, you made good time. I made you live a bandit to Sheriff and come back through Devil's Pass to a place where we capture them. And that Bolton's horse, Kimasami? Yes, Tano, and he's lame. I lost Bolton's trail at the river, but picked it up again. He's on foot now. He can't be far from here. Uh, there's much rock on ground, Kimasabi. Hard to follow tracks here. We'll find him. We'll leave Bolton's horse here and come back for him later. Doctor, not a horse. Never mind if I've made do as you're told. You've lost a lot of blood. You're not going to get very far the shape you're in. I'm all right, I tell you. You better let me take a look at that arm. If it's the law you're running from, you don't have to worry about me. <coughs> that bullet's still in there. It's got to come out soon or you're in for real trouble. You're right. I do need a doc. Where's the nearest one? Three Forks. A couple miles from here. But I wouldn't advise you to call on him. His office is next door to the jail. How would you like to make some money? Some real money? Doing what? Go get the doc. Bring him back here. Alone. I'll pay you handsome. How handsome? And when? Plenty handsome. As soon as I get this arm fixed. Sorry. I don't do business that way. 
In a deal of this kind, it's cash on the line. You gotta help me, Trapper. I promise I'll pay you. I promise I will. Somebody's coming. Someone's living in that cabin tunnel. Let's have a talk with him. You might have seen Bolton. The masked man and the Indian. Who are they? I don't know what their game is, and I haven't got time enough to wait around to find out. Now get out there and get rid of them. And if you make one wrong move, it's your last. I'll be watching from the window. Stay where you are. We're not outlaws. Who are you and what do you want? We're after an outlaw named Glenn Bolton. He may be wounded, but he's on foot. We lost his tracks in the rocks near here. Have you seen anyone around suspicious? I've seen no one, mister. Here's a handbill with Glenn Bolton's picture on it. I suggest you keep an eye out for him. Let me advise you. He's armed and desperate. I'll keep that in mind. We're going to town now and tell the sheriff about this. We'll be back this way later. What do you think, Kimisami? That man didn't sound trustworthy to me, Tano. We don't have time to check on him. Now, if Bolton's badly wounded, he may try to reach a doctor. We'll pick up Bolton's horse and go into town and warn the sheriff. We'll continue our search out here later. Come on. You're doing all right, Trapper, so far. That masked man's a tough hombre. He's the one that winged me. You're Glenn Bolton, huh? Yeah, I'm Bolton. Now, how about it? You gonna get that dock for me? No, it's too risky. They know you've been wounded. They'll be watching that dock every minute. Even if you had enough money to pay me, I wouldn't take the chance. Then I'm taking your horse. Now get out there and saddle it. Not so fast, Bolton. I know one sure way for you to get to the dock. And you can pick up that $2,500 reward at the same time. Yeah? How? Oh. Let me turn you over to the law. Turn me in? Are you crazy? Not for keeps, Bolton. Just temporary. Do you get your arm fixed and have a little rest? Later on, I'll help you break out of jail. What's in it for you? <clears throat> I'm a bounty hunter, Bolton. And this is my chance to collect the biggest bounty of all. The reward for a man's capture. Later on, we can split the money. Don't make sense turning myself in. I'd rather take my chances trying to reach the border. You'd never make it. Not even if you were in good shape. In a couple of hours, these hills will be crawling with men looking for you under every rock. You wouldn't get two miles. But once inside jail, they'll all relax, including the masked man. I gotta admit, it's something they'd never think of. That's right. They'd never look for this kind of a play. That's why it's got a chance to work. And that jail is old and flimsy. Once you get ready to go, I'll slip you a gun and supply you with a horse. That should be all you'll need. How do I know I can trust you? What's to keep you from collecting the reward and forgetting all about me? This should convince you I'm on the square. Here's a note signed by me confessing to a couple of recent robberies the sheriff's been puzzled about. Hide it in your boot. If I don't live up to my end of the bargain, you can turn it over to the sheriff. How do I know you committed these robberies? You don't know, Bolton. But you've got no choice. Either you trust me and get to the dock or you're done for. All right, Trapper. I warn you. You try and double-cross me and you'll live to regret it. Don't worry, Bolton. I'm not gonna double-cross you. We'll get that arm bandaged and then head for town. On the way, we'll cook up a story about your capture. What are you doing? This is where I'll say I captured you. Has to look right in case someone gets nosy. You're plenty smart, Trapper. We don't want to take any chances. You'll have to turn your gun over, too. My gun? Sure. You want this to look right, don't you? I'll have to tie your hands, too.
We'll take the shortcut to town through Canyon Pass. There's no need for that, Sheriff. I'm here on a peaceful mission. That mask doesn't look very peaceful. I have my personal reasons for wearing this mask, but I can assure you it's on the side of the law. Well, what is it you want? We came to warn you that Glenn Bolton is in this area. Glenn Bolton? That's right, Sheriff. He's wounded and on foot. We found his horse abandoned in the hills not far from here. If you move fast, you should be able to capture him. How do I know you're telling me the truth about this? Look, Sheriff. There's Bolton's horse. His initials are on his saddle. That doesn't prove anything. Maybe you're one of Bolton's gang. And this is a trick to get me out of town. I can assure you, Sheriff, we're telling the truth. If you not move fast, Bolton get away. Sheriff, I believe you're looking for this man. Glenn Bolton, where'd you capture him? I was coming into town for supplies. He tried to jump me and steal my horse. I got the best of him. I guess I owe you an apology, mister. That's all right, Sheriff. The important thing is that Bolton has been caught. That's right. Sharp, this is a valuable hide you brought in this time. I guess you know there's a price on his head. That's right, $2,500. Yeah, and it ought to be more than that for a coyote like him. Come on, Bolton. It'll be a pleasure to lock you up. I got a pretty bad arm, Sheriff. You have the doc look at it? Sure, as soon as you're safe, find bars. Mask man, I want to thank you for warning me about Bolton. He's a tough hombre. It was good work, Sharp. You're capturing him. You deserve the reward. Well, the money will sure come in handy. I guess I wouldn't have recognized him and brought him in if you hadn't showed me that circular. Where'd the capture take place? Up in Canyon Pass. There's a high rock runs along the trail up there. Bolton was hiding behind it and jumped me as I went by. Didn't he have a gun? Well, I guess not. Or else he was out of shells. That's not likely. We found his horse. There was plenty of ammunition in his saddlebags. Oh, I'm just telling you what happened. Strange he didn't use his gun. Especially with a wounded arm. Well, maybe he was afraid somebody might hear his shot. You have fight with him? Well, naturally. He knocked me off my horse. We had quite a struggle. What are you fellas getting at? Nothing at all, Sharp. Come on, Donald. Let's ride the canyon pass. I'd like to have a look at the trail there. Me think same thing, Kimi Sammy. Sharp's story not sound right. If he's telling the truth, there should be a sign of a fight between him and Bolton. Let's get mounted. This is Canyon Pass, Tunnel. According to Sharp's story, there's the large rock that Bolton was hiding behind. Let's have a look around. Man lead horse here, Kimisabi, not long ago. Maybe Bolton and Sharp. We should find signs of a fight up ahead. Tunnel, something happened here. The ground's been disturbed. Now, what do you think, Kimisabi? According to Sharp's story, he was riding a horse at this point. But I still see his footprints. Let's get back to our horses. I want to see where those tracks begin. Tracks come straight from cabin, Kimisami. For some reason, Sharp walked the whole distance into town. Him not tell truth about fight. Let's see if Sharp's in his cabin. He could have cut across the hills.
Someone dressed a wound here, Tano, and recently. Bolton have wound. You think him been here in cabin? Begins to look that way. We wait for Sharp, have talk with him? No, if we talk with him now, we'll only put him on his guard. We'd better ride into town and report this to the sheriff. Somebody come. Let's go. That ought to fix you up. Thanks, Doc. I feel better already. Oh, you'll be all right. Can't keep a bad man down. Is I'm all right? Sure. He has a constitution like iron. But I'll drop in and see him again tomorrow. Much obliged, Doc. See you later. What are you doing back here? Sheriff, what do you know about this man, Sharp? Sharp? Oh, he's been in trouble a couple times, but we've never been able to prove anything serious on him. Why do you ask? We have reason to believe he's not telling the truth. Bolton was in Sharp's cabin. What? Him have wound dressed there. That's right, Sheriff. And then he brought him directly here. Sharp tell a lie about fight. Him walk all the way back to town on foot. Bolton not jump him like him say. Then why did he make up that story about capturing Bolton on the trail? Well, that I don't know. It's obvious they're up to something. Otherwise, Sharp would have no reason to lie. Well, you gave me a straight story before. I've got to believe you this time. Sheriff, what are you going to do? Round up a few men, put a guard on Bolton day and night. No matter what they're planning, Bolton won't get away from me. Well, if you put a guard on Bolton, we may never find out what their scheme is. And if they're plotting a crime, Sharp belongs behind bars with Bolton. Well, what do you suggest we do? When will Sharp receive the money for Bolton's capture? Tomorrow morning. Good. Now, Bolton's a very suspicious man and has a quick temper. Perhaps we can trick him into talking. Now, here's my plan. How are you feeling today, Bolton? I'm all right. <laughs> I got a little news for you, Bolton. You're worth a lot more money than we thought you were. The reward for your capture has been raised to $10,000. Yeah? When did that happen? About 10 days ago. We just received word of it. Seems all those fellas you robbed got in together and raised the ante. <laughs> That's sharp, so my need lucky fella. When are you going to pay him off? Oh, he's paid off this morning. Left town an hour later. He ought to have a pretty good time with all that money in his pocket. You're lying. Now, why should I lie to you? Listen to this. Lex Sharp, local trapper and bounty hunter, Today received $10,000 reward for the capture of the notorious outlaw leader, Glenn Bolton. Immediately after receiving the reward money, Sharp left town, announcing that he would not be returning. Let me see that. That dirty double-crossing rattlesnake. You gotta get him back, Sheriff. He's as much of a crook as I am. What do you mean, Bolton? He didn't capture me. I let him turn me in. We made a deal to split the reward money, and he was going to help me bust out of here later on. You expect me to believe that? You're just sore at him because he captured you, and now you're trying to get him in trouble. I'm telling the truth, Sheriff. You've got to believe me, I swear it. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. Sharp gave me this as a guarantee that he wouldn't run out on me. Oh, so Sharp's the thief I've been looking for. That should be all the evidence we need against him. <laughs> you fell for a trick, Bolton. The reward money wasn't raised. No, we knew that you and Sharp were up to something, and we figured you'd talk if we made you mad enough. <laughs> you had it figured just right, mister. We'll get Sharp for you now and bring him back here right away. Good. Give me trouble, Doc. I wish you'd look at it. Sure. It's been hurting plenty. Well, maybe we'd better change the bandage. Yeah. Maybe that'd help. Wait a minute, Doctor. Yeah, I wouldn't do that if I were you, Sheriff. Not unless you want a dead Doc on your hands. Now, drop your gun belt. I 
Get in. You too. Sticking on your feet. You're coming with us. What for? Your partner talked and we know the whole story. We're turning you over to the sheriff. All right, Tonto, tie him. All right, hold it, all of you. You with a mask, get your hands up. Turn around. You too, Indian. All right, Sharp. Disarm them. Watch out. They're full of tricks. Back up against the wall. What happened? How'd you get free? Never mind that. We gotta get out of here quick. A masked man said you talked. Told them everything. He tricked me. He said you were double-crossing me. But now it's our turn to play games. Step out, mister. I said step out here, mister. I got a score to settle with you. But first I want to see what he looks like from under that mask. Rip it off. I wouldn't try it, Sharp. Don't let him scare you, Trapper. His teeth are pulled. All right, you keep him covered. I'll do it myself. I've sent for the doctor to look at your leg, Bolton. This should teach you not to tangle with the mask man. They're both back in jail, and this time I'll give you my guarantee they'll stay there. Well, then, Sheriff, my friend and I will be on our way. Now, wait a minute. What about the reward money for the capture of Bolton? You're entitled to that. I'll accept the money, Sheriff, with the understanding that you'll donate it for me to some worthy cause. My friend and I work for some kind of a different reward. Adios. Did you send for me? Yes, your patient's back in jail. He wants to see you. It's his leg this time. His leg? What happened? He got caught in a trap, set by a couple of real experts. And I just realized who they are. Tonto and the Lone Ranger. I don't see horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver, away! With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early west. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. Escape? Hmm? Oh, oh, I, I escaped all right. <laughs> you don't worry about that. But how? Weren't the Indians closing in on you? Yes, they were. But, uh, like I said, uh, uh, it, it, the night was pitch dark. Without the flaming arrows, you couldn't see your, your hand or your face. Well, sir, just as them redskins was about to make their final charge, a thunderstorm come up, put out the flaming arrows, and under cover of darkness, I picked up the wounded lieutenant, and... Uncle Ed! How many times have I told you not to whittle in my living room? Just look at this floor. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Laura. I just, just kind of forgot. Uncle Ed was telling me how he saved the fort from an Indian attack. I can imagine. But that's no excuse for you letting him make a mess like this. Now, just a minute, Laura. I don't need no 10-year-old child to nursemaid me. What am I going to do with you? 
You drag dirt all over the house. You, you whittle on the floor. You, you spill crumbs and tobacco. And last week, you burned a hole in my best blanket. Well, if I'm not wanted here, I'll, I'll just pack up and move out. For heaven's sakes, don't be so touchy. I'm not touchy. I just don't like to be treated like a useless old man. And I'm not accustomed to sitting around doing nothing. They didn't want me why they asked me to come and live with them. I'll fix them. I'll stay up here in these mountains until they get good and worried. Susan's the only one that gives two hoots what. What do you think, Tonto? Them trying to cover tracks, Kim Sammy, but me think them come this way. I think you're right. Too bad the ground's so hard that we can't... Don't move, either of you. Drop your guns. You make mistake, old I man. I said drop your guns. If you think we're outlaws... Why, well, of course you're outlaws. I'm taking to the sheriff. I wear a mask because I don't wish to be recognized. I'll bet you don't. It's probably a price on your head. Go on, get moving. What about our horses? Sheriff Gray can come get them after you're locked up. Maybe Silver not want to be left behind. I suspect you're right. Come on, boy. You dirty owl hoot. Sorry, but you brought this on yourself. We're not bandits. As a matter of fact, we're after three outlaws who escaped from the territorial prison. You mean Lefty Martin his men? That's right. Glory be. You think they're around here someplace? I'm quite sure they are. Now, if you promise to behave yourself, I'll return your rifle. You sure, mister? Here you are, old-timer. I'm no old-timer. I'm just as good as I was 20 years ago. Well, I'm sure you are. I meant no offense. You see strangers ride this way? No, nobody comes up in these mountains since the mines played out. As you probably know, Lefty is a killer. The two men with him, Jake Logan and Mike Carney, are almost as bad. If you notice anything suspicious around here, tell the sheriff right away. Oh, I'll do that. Thanks. I hope we meet again under more pleasant circumstances. All right. Adios. So long. Gee, Josephat, wait till I tell him about this. But, Dad. Susan, I've explained a dozen times Uncle Ed's too old to herd cattle. He's just too stubborn to admit it. Here he comes. I don't scold him for being late. Well, if he wants to eat cold food, that's his privilege. Folks, have I got news. You know them three convicts that escaped from prison? Well, sir, they're hiding around here someplace. Oh, no. Are you sure? Absolutely. We should have left our money in the bank. What if those thugs break in and... Nonsense, Laurel. Who told you these men are in the neighborhood? A masked man riding on a big white horse. He come up to me while I was... A masked man? Yeah, and there was a, an engine with him. Oh, Uncle Ed. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. What for? For telling a cock and bull story like that. But it's true. A man just has so much patience. Now, don't make me lose what little I have left. I saw that masked man and the engine as plain as the nose in your face. I talked to him. All right, have it your way. Now, sit down and eat your supper. You still don't believe me? No, I don't. And while we're on the subject, Laura tells me you've been frightening Susan again with a lot of those nonsensical tales about killings and scalpings and such. What's wrong with learning a child something about the history of this country? I wouldn't call those tall tales of yours history. No, I suppose you wouldn't. You sit there all safe and snug, and you forget if men like me hadn't fought and, and struggled and, and died, this place would still be a wilderness. I'm not asking for much, but at least you could show us some respect. I, I had no idea that, that he'd take it so hard. No, you'd, you'd better stay here. Yes, child. I just want to tell you I love you. Oh, bless you, sweetheart. And your stories don't frighten me one bit. They just don't understand, do they? 
That's because they're grown-ups. There's lots of things that grown-ups don't understand. No use, Tonto. It'll be dark in another five minutes. I uh, may not like to give up. Neither do I. Lefty and his men have done a good job of covering up their trail. Ah, uh, when them go down into valley where ground's soft, it'd not be so easy to hide trail. I suspect they'll stay wherever they are long enough to rest themselves and their horses. They've been riding hard for a week. Ah, uh, them need rest before them cross badlands to Mexican border. Yes, and they'll also need to take along food and water. Ah, uh, them not have money to buy food. Them have to steal. Exactly. We'd better ride into Brock and ask Sheriff Gray to warn the ranchers in the vicinity that Lefty may attempt a raid. Let's go. It's almost too quiet around here. Let's go. Wait a second. All oh, those confounded birds are sticking in my leg. Well, don't take all night. you red-handed, didn't I? Give us a break, mister. We just want something to eat. You're lying. You come here for the money. We were only looking for food. I still think you're lying. You come here for my nephew's money. I don't know how you found out about it, but I... Say, what's going on here? Who are you? Don't move, either of you. Uncle Ed! Shut up. Stay where you are. You've got a nerve breaking in here and threatening... I us said with... shut up. Are you hurt, Uncle Ed? You clumsy oaf. What'd you come busting in for? You can settle that later. Right now, I want the money. What money? The old man said you had a lot of money around the house. Well, he, uh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's old and kind of, well, he's kind of feeble-minded. Feeble-minded? Why, you young... Uncle Ed. What? Oh. Oh, yes, mister. Uh, here lately, I do get things kind of mixed up. Not this time, Grandpa. Where is it? Honestly, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Come off of it, Buster. Or do you want your wife to be a widow? Well, you wouldn't. What have I got to lose? No. Well? It's in a box in the bottom drawer of that chest. Thanks. Take a look, Jake. Please, mister. This is my fault. I should have kept my mouth shut. Shoot me, do anything to me, but don't take their money. It's all they've got. For five years, they've been working... You know, you're breaking my heart. Frank, Laura, I... Uh... Here it is, boss. Chuck full of green. Good. Get in there. Hurry up! Hurry up! You're satisfied. I'm sorry, Frank. Honest, I... You're not going after them alone. One here on the family's enough. I'm getting the sheriff. I'll go with you, Frank. You're staying here. You've caused enough trouble already. Honey, you better check on Susan. Look, mister. 
I appreciate you coming here to warn me about these crooks. But I had an official report that three of them were seen at Rose Creek yesterday, heading west. Sheriff, I haven't been near Rose Creek. Whoever turned in that report was mistaken. I've heard a lot about you, mister. And this letter you showed me from the governor says you're on the side of the law. But I can't throw the whole countryside into a panic just on your say-so. When people are in danger, they should be told about it. The more people know about crooks, the better chance to catch them. All right. I'll go see Walker Stevenson and ask him to. Sheriff, I've been robbed. What? Two men just broke into my place and... Who's that? Don't worry, he's no outlaw. But he's masked. I know, go on. Well, these two men broke in and threatened to kill me unless I told where he kept our savings. They took every cent we own, almost a thousand dollars. Do you recognize any of these three men? Why, sure, that's one of them. This man looks like the other one. Lefty Mott and Jake Logan. Huh? Guess I owe you an apology. I'll round up a posse. They're probably heading for the border. Did these men take any food with them? They loaded some in a sack, but evidently in their excitement over the money, they forgot about it. They couldn't reach the border without food. What about Carney? They'd hardly leave without him. You think Carney go to a hideout and then go back to get him? That's a reasonable guess, Tonto. Then let's get going. This moonlight won't last much longer. There's a storm coming up. While you organize a posse, Tonto and I'll go on ahead. We may be able to pick up their trail before the storm breaks. Good enough. Come on. Did you find them? The rainstorm wiped out the trail. Our money's gone, Laura. We might as well face it. Well, we're still strong and healthy. Honey, any other woman would have bawled me out for not keeping our money in the bank. We'll all feel much better after we've had some breakfast. Susan, will you go and fetch Uncle Ed? Sure, Mom. At least the old man was right about one thing. What was that? It was Lefty Mott who robbed us. And Ed did see a masked man. You're joking. No, I saw him myself. He was in this shop. Mommy, Uncle Ed's gone. Gone? I found this out of bed. Frank and Laura, I know you're never going to forgive me for what I done last night, so I'm going after them robbers myself. When I get your money, I'll send it to you, because I'm not coming back where I'm not wanted. Tell Susan I'll write her as soon as I get a job. I'm not as old and useless as some people think. He's not coming back. Oh, yes, he is, Susan. He's just <laughs> angry and upset because... You were mean to him. You scolded him all the time. And you wouldn't believe his stories. Now, as soon as I've had some sleep, I'll go and look for him. Even if you find him, he won't come back. You were mean to him. Oh, Susan, please don't cry. Mommy, I love Wonder Ed so much. I'll try and find him. <laughs> That old man we see yesterday. I wonder what he's doing way up here. Oh, so it's you again. Yes, we meet again. If you're still after them bandit fellows, you're just wasting your time. We found their trail last night before it rained. I'm sure they're hiding up here in these hills. Sure they are. And they got the money they stole from my nephew. So you're Frank Adams, Uncle. Yeah, I'm not proud of it. I'll get his money back all right, but you won't catch me going back to live with him and be insulted and, and laughed at and, and treated like some no-count old fool. Well, if you feel that way about it, why are you so anxious to get his money back for him? Because it's my fault it got stolen. Besides, I'm the only one to know where it is. You know where money is? Of course I do, but I'm not telling anybody. I see. I don't mean to interfere, sir, but don't you think it would be a good idea to forget this quarrel with Frank and go home? You don't believe me. I didn't say that, but I'm sure Frank will be worried about you. And, well, at your age... Uh... My age has nothing to do with it. Them bandits had burrs all over the trouser legs. And those kind of burrs only grow in one place. If that's true, why didn't you tell the sheriff about it? Because I didn't remember about the burrs till later, that's why. You show us where burrs grow? Oh, no, you don't. I'm going to capture those bandits myself. And I'm going to prove to people that I'm not as useless as they think I am. As much as I admire your courage, I think we'd better take you home. What are you talking about? 
But if you do know where Lefty and his men are hiding, and you go there alone, you'll only be killed. Oh, I can take care of myself. That's too great a risk. Are you serious? I mean, about taking me back to town? It's for your own good, sir. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, suppose I let you go along with me. Well, what about that? I'm sorry, but these men are dangerous. Tano and I are used to dealing with killers, but... But I'd just be in the way, is that it? No, but you might get hurt. If you think you can tell us where these killers are hiding, and we succeed in capturing them, I'll make sure you get the reward and full credit. A lot of good that'd do. I'm sorry, but it's the best I can offer. All right. The birds I told you about grow near a shack at the Silver X mine. Now, you follow this trail, and turn left when you get to a big rock that's shaped like a man's head. Thank you, sir. We'll see you later. All right. Why don't Jake hurry up for those berries he's supposed to be picking? Thought you were sick of berries. Well, they're better than nothing. If I'd been with you last night, I'd have brought back some food. There wasn't any point in all three of us going. And quit your griping. A thousand bucks will buy a lot more than food. How long are we going to stay cooped up here, starving to death? A couple of days. The things quiet down. Cover me from the window. What happened? He was at the window. You dirty, thieving cutthroats. It's the old man. Did you have to plug him? Someone might have heard the shot. He was going to plug you. Let's get him inside. Oh, oh take it easy. Who's he? He's the old coot that tried to give us trouble last night. Well, how do you know where to come? That's what we're going to find out. Go out and watch the trail. If anybody heard that shot, they might get nosy. Right. Leave them here. Get him oh. down. Get him down. No way out of Canyon. Maybe we take wrong turn. No, Tonto. I suspect we've been tricked. Uh, what do you think? I think the old man led us on a wild goose chase. Come on. Last time, you old fool. How did you know we were here? If you had any sense, you could figure it for yourself. Did you tell anyone where you were coming? Maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Well, what's wrong, boy? Silver's no trouble. Maybe somebody wait around bending trail. We'll leave Silver and Scott here and circle around on foot. Let me take rope. Tell me all I want to know, I'll break every bone in your body. I don't care if you kill me. I haven't got much to live for anyway. I'll give you just three seconds to start talking. They've caught the old man all right. We'll use the tap on the window trick. One, two, three. What's that? Go look. Stay where you are. You're covered. I drop your gun. Stay back or I'll shoot the old man. Stay where you are, Injun. Drop your guns or I'll let him have it. Let him shoot me. I ain't worth anything and the money's here and you can take it back to Frank. 
Does it mean that much to you? Drop your guns, I'm warning you. They're gonna kill us all anyway. That's right, Grandpa. You'll hang for it, Lefty? They'll have to catch me first. All right, that's a... <laughs> Keep them covered, Tano. You hurt badly? Oh, you shouldn't have taken such a chance. You should have let him shot me. Well, I don't agree with you. If I hadn't lied to you and been such a stubborn old fool, none of this would happen. Forget it, Ed. Right now, I want to tie up these men and have Tano look at that shoulder. All right. Well, Mr. Andrews, now that Lefty and his men are back in prison and Frank's money's been returned, Tonto and I must be on our way. You sure have been wonderful. Mm. What about reward, Kimizami? There's a thousand dollars reward for recapturing those crooks. Tonto and I convinced the sheriff that you should receive it all. Oh, I don't deserve any of it. You pioneers who made this country possible deserve more than that. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. And I won't forget what you said about not being so cantankerous and touchy about things. From now on, I'm just going to relax and enjoy being my age. And we're going to see that you do enjoy it. That doesn't mean that you can loaf. I'll need a lot of help running this place, and I'm counting on you. Bye, Susan. You take good care of your uncle. I shall. Adios, my friends. Goodbye. Well? Uncle Ed, if you're going to be different from now on, does that mean you can't tell me any more stories? Oh, bless you, child. Of course not. In fact, I'm going to tell you a story right now. A story about the kindest, bravest, most wonderful man that ever lived. Is that how you saved the fort from an Indian pack? Oh, shucks, child. This story isn't about me. This is a story about the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Be with the Lone Ranger and Tonto same time next week for new dangers in another thrill-packed adventure when the Lone Ranger rides again.